United Nations, Excellencies, Distinguished Delegates, Ladies and Gentlemen, I am indeed delighted to participate in this 74th session of the United Nations General Assembly, and I take this opportunity to congratulate the President of this session, Professor Tijani, a son of Africa and of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Professor Tijani, you can count on the full support from Kenya. And I also take this opportunity <clears throat> to commend your predecessor, Ambassador Maria Fernanda Espinoza, who throughout her tenure remained steadfast in her promotion of and commitment to a rules-based international system and multilateralism. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, the theme for this year's session, Galvanizing Multilateral Efforts for Poverty Eradication, Quality Education, Climate Action, and Inclusion, is timely. It helps us to engage <clears throat> a range of complex and interwined global challenges that confront humanity today. We collectively have a solemn duty to ensure that the world is a better place for future generations. We must bequeath our children a politically stable, environmentally healthy, and socially cohesive world. We, the leaders gathered in this great hall, are and must be the bridge to that future world. Our actions today will determine whether that future will be bleak, depleted of resources, with higher poverty levels, and fragmented, warring nations. Or, on the other hand, our actions today will bestow upon our children better living standards, prosperous, vibrant, and cohesive societies endowed with sustainably managed resources. Mr. President, never have we, the global leaders, faced such a stark choice to either redeem the future or to destroy it. The envisioned prosperous future calls us all to take bold actions that give meaning to the theme of the General Assembly. In this regard, allow me, Mr. President, to reflect on a number of actions that can contribute to the desired future. First, we must put people at the core of development. We must support our populations, particularly the youth, to be productively engaged, to shape the future, and not to fall victim to it. In this regard, we must accelerate the implementation of the SDGs. Critical to this is the generation of big, disaggregated data to help us plan targeted interventions, and to monitor implementations. In Kenya, <clears throat> we have heavily invested in education and health in an effort to achieve social inclusion, develop knowledge and competencies, and to secure the future by not leaving anyone behind. We have now achieved 100% transition from primary to secondary school and free secondary school education for all day scholars. To enhance equal opportunity, we have also provided re-entry for girls who drop out of school after falling pregnant. We provide free sanitary towels to all school-going girls, and Kenya's children now enjoy an average of 10.7 years of schooling, the highest in our region. To drive our economy, <clears throat> Kenya is tackling the burden of diseases and is on the path to achieving universal health coverage by 2022. We provide access to a health benefits package that prioritizes primary health care interventions, reduces the cost of medicines, and increases the number of people with insurance cover. Second, Mr. President, you cannot have development without sustainable peace. 
In the Horn of Africa region, a complexity of factors has in the last three or so decades led to multi-layered threats to peace. These are exasperated by, disruptive, by the disruptive effects of climate change, introducing ecological vulnerabilities to a very delicate security context. The ability of terrorist organizations to execute their plans with impunity has introduced another dimension to the security terrain in our region. Mr. President, the commitment to pursue peace and security remains at the core of our foreign policy. And I am pleased to say that combined efforts to advance peace and security in the region continue to bear fruit. I take this opportunity to congratulate the Sudan for coming to a path of sustainable peace which they negotiated amongst themselves with the help of the African Union. Kenya shares the optimism of the people of the Sudan and we believe the, traditional, the, the, the transitional process will pave the way for democratic elections in 2022. I also warmly commend the role of women of the Sudan for driving and facilitating this most satisfactory and lessons-laden outcome that makes the entire African continent proud. I am, also <clears throat> I am also encouraged by progress made in South Sudan. Security has improved with a decrease in violence across the country since the signing of the revitalized peace agreement. And I am convinced the pending issues can be resolved in a consultative, in a consultative and collaborative manner. I commend Dr. Riyak Machar for traveling to Juba for the face-to-face -face meeting with his brother and colleague, President Salva Kiir, to engage on the outstanding issues. Kenya supports the creation of an all-inclusive transitional mechanism and institutions to undertake the required political process and reforms. This will ensure smooth transition to the next phase of the peace process. Mr. President, in the same spirit, my administration continues to reach out to the Federal Republic of Somalia in an effort to find an amicable and sustainable solution to the maritime boundary disputes between us. In this regard, I welcome the decision of the African Union Peace and Security Council of the 3rd September 2019 that urges both parties to engage. As we all know, the UN Charter privileges the use of negotiation as the most preferred mechanism for settlement of disputes. Similarly, the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea provi provides for the delimitation of maritime boundaries between states amicably. It is in this normative framework that Kenya calls for the resolution of this dispute through negotiation. And we remain hopeful that the federal government of Somalia will be amenable and committed to the search for a mutually acceptable and sustainable solution to this dispute. Third, Mr. President, we must act together to protect our shared destiny. Pressure from population growth, diminishing resources, and climate change put stress on natural resources such as water, food, arable land, and energy. We leaders must turn to sustainable resource management models to help restore the balance in our ecosystem. I congratulate the Secretary General for convening the Climate Action Summit. We must implement and scale up affordable solutions that will help us leapfrog to sustainable and more resilient economies that reduces greenhouse emissions 
and push global warming below 1.5 degrees Celsius. Kenya and Turkey co-lead on the infrastructure, cities, and local action aspect of the summit, whose aim is to build better climate resilience initiatives for our urban poor. We urge countries to place the vulnerable urban poor communities at the center of their climate action plans. Mr. President, together with 13 other heads of state and government and the Special Envoy for the Ocean, Kenya is a member of the High Level Panel for Sustainable Ocean Economy that seeks to develop and support solutions for ocean health and wealth in policy, governance, technology, and finance. Mr. President, in the Horn of Africa, we witness a confluence of climate change and conflict. Cyclic droughts, pressure, food supply, cause competition over land, water, and other resources, and become a driver of conflicts. We welcome the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the Special Report on Global Warning of 1.5 degrees Celsius that points to the urgent actions needed to avert catastrophic global climate change. On its part, Kenya has embarked on programs for sustainable, proactive climate action. We have banned the use of single-use plastics and intensified our national tree planting campaigns in order to restore our water catchment areas. We target to increase our forest cover from the current 77% to 15% by 2022. We are focused on development of clean energy. Today, Kenya is among the top 10 global producers of geothermal electricity. Recently, we launched a 300 megawatt wind project, the single largest wind power project in Africa, and have several renewable energy generation projects in the pipeline. Mr. President, the fourth area that we need to secure a better future is financing for development. We need an estimated US dollars 2.5 to 3 trillion dollars annually to finance SDGs and climate action and target the critical needs of our global population. We need to introduce innovative financing models that reorients private capital, create new instruments and modalities that strengthen regulatory framework to de-risk investments. Recognizing the untapped potential to raise capital through issuance of bonds to ordinary citizens, the government of Kenya, in conjunction with private sector players, launched a mobile-centered government bond called M. Akiba in 2017, so that Kenyans can now, with as little as 30 US dollars, participate in the government securities market. We have provided financial facilitation through a revolutionary micro, small, and medium enterprise credit financing scheme, dubbed STAWI, which means prosper in Kiswahili, that enables small business enterprises to overcome constraints, including lack of collateral and perceived credit risk. The fifth area, Mr. President, is the use of technology to drive development. Digital revolution offers opportunities to accelerate the achievements of the SDG in multiple ways, including e-commerce, online jobs, improved service delivery, increasing transparency, improved targeting for social safety net programs, and expanding 
financial inclusion. Taking advantage of mobile phone financial services, we in Kenya have more than tripled financial inclusion from 26% in, in, in the year 2006 to 82% in 2019. In May 2019, we launched Kenya's Digital Economy Blueprint to develop a digitally empowered citizenry living in a digitally enabled society. We hope to champion the growth of an Africa-wide digital economy. Finally, Mr. Chairman, the agenda outlined requires not less partnerships, not less collaboration and international cooperation, but more partnerships, more collaboration, and more international cooperation. We therefore need to re-energize and reform the multilateral system in order to guarantee our common future. We must reaffirm the values of the UN Charter that embraces a common humanity, safeguards a rule-based international order, and underscores equality and respect of all humanity. I applaud the Secretary General for his continued reform efforts. Kenya is honored to host the United Nations offices in Nairobi, the only one in the Global South, and looks forward to facilitating the establishment and hosting of the regional United Nations Global Service Delivery Model Center. We also welcome the positive response by the UN General Assembly to the concerns raised by member states calling for better coordination on urbanization, human settlement, and environmental governance matters. In this regard, in March of 2019, Kenya was proud to host a successful fourth session of the United Nations Environmental Assembly, UNEA, and the third session of the One Planet Summit with France also in March of this year. This together with the first session of the United Nations Habitat Assembly in May of this year. Kenya fully supports strengthening of governance and member states' oversight over UN habitat. Mr. President, I want this opportunity to thank the African Union for the endorsement of Kenya's candidature to the Security Council for the year 2021-2022, and our pursuit for solutions to global challenges convinces us that we are well placed to contribute constructively in the Security Council. When the world had given up on our region, we in Kenya opened our doors to millions of people fleeing insecurity. To this day, we remain hosts to hundreds of thousands of refugees. Our investment in the Sudan negotiations led to the Comprehensive Peace Agreement in 2005, and we continue to support stabilization efforts in both Sudan and South Sudan. When the world had turned away from Somalia, we engaged and invested in the Eldoret and Baghdadi peace processes that led to the formation and hosting of the transitional national government in Kenya that ultimately led to the formation of the transitional federal government in Somalia. We have over the years contributed more than 40,000 peacekeepers and engaged in post-conflict reconstruction and development efforts across the world. We therefore hope that our experience, our competencies, an unrelenting search for peace and prosperity in our neighborhood, on our continent, and the wider world will persuade the entire UN membership to support the African Union candidate 
for the non-permanent seat of the United Nations Security Council during the election slated for June of 2020. I request for the vote in each of each and every member of our United Nations family. Mr. Chairman, in closing, I invite all of you to Kenya. In November of this year, when together with the Kingdom of Denmark and the United Nations Population Fund, we will convene the Nairobi Summit on the International Conference on Population and Development. This is our opportunity to reaffirm the recognition of people's rights, choices, and well-being as a path to sustainable and integrated development. Our deliberations in Nairobi will undoubtedly further secure our future and shared destiny. I thank you and God bless you all. Thank you.